Good morning, and thank you, Chairwoman Maloney and the committee for holding this important roundtable on an issue that directly impacts myself, those present, and women across the country who hold 50% of American jobs. I wish that I didn't have to be here sharing personal and intimate details about my life, details that are public knowledge and can be easily searched on the internet. I wish that I didn't have to resort to speaking to the Washington Post for there to be any sort of public investigation into the team. I wish that when I reported my experiences to the team and to the NFL that there would have been change in accountability, but at this point my options have been exhausted and that's led me here to reveal truths and details once again about myself and my experience working at the Washington football team. 81% of women have reported experience some sort of sexual harassment and or assault in their lifetime. I wish that I didn't become a part of that statistic at my place of employment. I worked at the Washington football team for eight years, and I can't recall a time that I didn't experience or fear sexual harassment. It was just a pervasive part of the culture and an unavoidable rite of passage being a woman who worked there. Working for the team was my first full-time job out of college, and I was so excited to start working for the team. I grew up in Maryland, and I rooted and cheered for them my entire life. I experienced many work firsts there. First bonus, first promotion, first office potluck, first employee hire, first threat of physical violence by a supervisor, first hostile work environment, first public humiliation, first sexual assault. When I initially reported, reported sexual harassment to my boss, I was terrified. I was only 24 and the man who sexually harassed me was old enough to be my father and he also was considered the voice of the team in the public sphere. So to me, the power that he held in his position and his close personal relationship with Daniel Snyder was enough for me to reconsider anything. And at the time, I didn't know and realize that 55% of victims experience retaliation after speaking up or making a claim. I still decided to tell my boss about my harasser's public comments about my appearance, his unwanted kisses on the cheek, and the emails about special gifts he expected from me. When I told my boss, we agreed that nothing would happen if I reported it to the person who was supposedly running HR at that point. And so my boss called my harasser on the phone. Mind you, we were in two different locations. I was in Maryland and he was in Virginia. So this had to be done via phone call. I was in the room when my boss called him to tell him to leave me alone, and it's a memory I'll never forget because I distinctly remember hearing my harasser yell through the phone, what the fuck is she thinking? And I just kind of muted everything after that. So fearing further harassment and retaliation, I took to hiding from him at public events. I strategically would place myself between colleagues so he couldn't get near me. and. I, I just felt humiliated to have to hide in plain sight in front of all of my colleagues, my clients, and I was just so frustrated that I had to avoid company functions for fear that I would experience sexual harassment again. And most of all, it made me feel worthless. All the hard work I put into my work and the team and I was reduced to my appearance and not my value as an employee. The second time I decided to report harassment was with the arrival of a new executive team similar to Anna that was specifically hired to help change the business. I told them about the public comments about my appearance, the unwanted kisses on the cheek, the email, as well as the time at training camp I was sexually assaulted by the same man that I had previously reported. Those executives were appalled at my treatment and had good intentions to affect change, but they were all fired within six months of reporting this. And after they were fired, and this was reportedly because the old guard uh, at the Washington football team did not want change. I, I just felt like I had zero protection. I didn't want to go back to avoiding people, clients, events, and even my own job to keep away from my harasser. So I resigned from my position without another job lined up so I wouldn't have to deal with this. It's my sincere hope that Congress will hold the Washington football team and the NFL accountable for creating and maintaining a toxic workplace for so long and that burying the results of a 10-month investigation would reveal exactly what happened and who was responsible. The 20-year reign of team owner, sole team owner now, Dan Snyder, an era permeated with bullying, verbal abuse, sexual harassment, and sexual assault 
has unfortunately been given the stamp of approval by the NFL. Myself and many other brave individuals have come forward to share our experiences and actively participate in the invest investigation we believed would be fair and transparent. It wasn't. NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell used us and the investigation to make it seem like he cared about this issue, but then he blamed us for not receiving or releasing a report. Let's be very clear, the people that I know that participated in this investigation wanted and expected a report. There must be transparency, and only then can we have real accountability. This is not just about the Washington football team and its employees. It's about the millions of women in workplaces ac across the country who endure harassment every day in our everyday lives. It's about the message that the NFL sent to American women everywhere when it brushed aside the victims who came forward and embraced Dan Snyder. That message was, we don't care about you and you don't matter. We are now here before all of you in Congress, once again telling our stories and revealing intimate details about ourselves that we shouldn't have to. I look forward to seeing what you all and what Congress message, the message that you all send to workplaces and women across America. Thank you.